Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Vinny Langdon Show. Who is this? The Sean Shadows. And they got a new record that came out last week called Searchlights. And you guys will learn all about it coming up on this episode of the Vinny Langdon Show. You girls ready? And guy? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, we're, we're the Shondas, and, and we're coming, coming up, up next on the Vinny Langdon Show. Hi, I'm Tamim, and I play drums in the Shondas. And I'm Eli, and I play violin, and also I sometimes sing. I'm Fury, I play guitar and sing backing vocals. I'm Louisa, and I'm the singer and bassist. Late 2005, um, Eli, the violinist, and I had recently broken up from our previous band, The Syndicate, and we were very excited about starting a new project, and things just sort of came together. We were becoming friends with this one, and she wanted to take up the drums, and she learned very quickly, and then later on, our guitarist was replaced by Fury. Uh, I played a lot of different instruments and sang starting when I was really, really little. I wanted to be a Broadway singer. I fantasized about being both Christine and The Phantom of the Opera in The Phantom of the Opera, which would be difficult. Um, but I think if anyone could do that one woman show, it would probably be me. Um, but I played guitar and piano and violin and saxophone and all this stuff. But when I was about 13 or 12 or 13, I started playing in punk bands. And that just evolved until this point when I'm in this band that I love very much. And um, I had piano lessons as a kid um, and played a couple of different instruments um, until I was about 14 um, when I started renting a, an acoustic guitar from a local shop and decided I was going to teach myself how to play so that it would be... I was concerned that if I had to practice, then I might get burned out on it. But if I got to play, then it would be really fun and continue to be enjoyable. So I played mind games with myself, basically, to teach myself guitar. Um, <laughs> and uh, and played in rock musicals and sang and did a lot of theater at that point and, um, and played with a couple of different Bay Area bands. Um, and... One thing led to another. I uh, started playing violin when I was four, and uh, what happened was my father took me to go see a performance of Peter and the Wolf, which if you're not <laughs> if you're not familiar with Peter and the Wolf, um, each character is sort of enacted by a different instrument, and Peter is the violin. And when we came home, I was very excited, and I begged my father to let me take violin lessons, and. Um, and he started crying because what I didn't know is that everyone on my dad's side of the family, like we have like several generations of, of violinists and um, my like great, great uncles uh, who were the first to immigrate to the US from, um, from Russia had like played their violins in bars across Russia to get the money for the boat and everything. So it was, it was very emotional for him, but I didn't know that. Um, and so I, yeah, so I played classical uh, growing up and then quit when I was in high school and, um, and it was actually Louisa in our in our first band that uh, that she mentioned before that uh, convinced me to to take it up again and that it was okay to play violin in a rock band and I've been I've been uh, trying to smooth out the kinks ever since. I grew up in a Orthodox Jewish family and we were kind of known in the neighborhood to be kind of like the Jewish von Trapps. Um, we would like uh, every Friday night we would like sit around the uh, the the dinner table and sing and harmonize and like bang beats on the table and kind of go late into the night. And so while I wasn't any kind of virtuoso and I didn't have any training, um, my dad was a Jewish wedding musician, still is, um, and my brother um, became like a, a quite virtuosic like jazz guitarist. And um, there's just, there. And everyone in my family loves to sing, so I feel like I grew up saturated in a kind of music. Um, and I always dabbled, like I had dabbled in mandolin, but I nearly broke it because I was so clumsy. <laughs> I dabbled in guitar and I got sick of playing like dust in the wind over and over and again. Um, and so, you know, when and I, we had a drum kit in the basement and I would play like really crappily like alt rock hits from the 90s periodically. But when this band came into my life and, you know, there was no drummer and I was sort of like the obvious choice because I'm sort of a Muppet and I sort of like loved, I have a good sense of rhythm, but I never like really picked up the drums. Um, so it was, it was cool to just like sort of, you know, fly by the seat of my pants and like pick up some drumsticks and go on tour two months later. Our record release show for our first record was in January, 2007. Yeah. Um, we had recorded the record in the fall of 2006 and we had formed I guess, less than a year before then. And our second album came out last year, and our third album came out last week. 
It's going really, really well. We um, we get to go to all these different places in the country that we probably wouldn't otherwise get to visit. And that's really exciting because we like to eat. And so we get to go to all these parts of the country that have amazing different food, whether it's Southwestern food or Tex-Mex or whatever. We, we have a really good time eating. But also we play really great shows and meet people who are doing activism and music and community organizing and all this stuff everywhere we go and that's probably the most exciting thing to me and also every time we go out on tour we have more fans and that is really heartening when we sell records and people come out and they're excited to see us and they're singing along and dancing I mean it is truly what we want to do with our lives so it, it could make me cry just talking about it I also feel like it's really cool um, that we just get to connect with people. It's one of my favorite. I love being a performer. I love performing and having that synergy with audiences. But it's super cool to just like, I think, especially for me on this tour, like we've been co connecting with so many awesome artists. Um, we connected with this really rad videographer who worked on a little video for us. Um, we've connected with some awesome musicians who are interested in collaborating and just some really cool people who we get to sit down and like have a burger, veggie burger with and like hear their awesome stories about playing with like really famous musicians. And, you know, I just think it's cool to, to be traveling through all these cities and get to meet people who I wouldn't otherwise get to meet. It's, it sounds so funny. Um, I feel really pretty square talking about it, but it everything feels so tenuous on tour health-wise that like eating healthfully becomes particularly important, which is funny because you're driving down the highway and constantly passing like, oh, there's a chain that we don't see often that has root beer floats. Root beer floats sound really good. Oh, cheese curds, cool. <laughs> but if you do that, for instance, or a certain regional burger chain um, with, with a secret vegetarian menu, but like, but if you're doing that all the time, you know, it, with the existing tour body threats, <laughs> then it's just, it never goes well, you know? And you're like, oh, this is a great milkshake and I feel terrible. <laughs> and we're going to be in the van for the next 10 hours and then we're going to sleep on the floor and then we're gonna play really hard. Yeah, it's, it's um, so we try to eat at least one solid meal per day with multiple food groups. Not to belabor it, but see, the thing is, like, if you live in New York City, you, you have to walk all the time. And so for me, it's only recent that I, that I even started going to a gym ever. For me, I always just got exercise by living in the city and running up and down subway stairs and running around the city. And when we're on tour, suddenly that means my primary exercise source is gone. And so our life consists of sitting still for hours and hours on end and then exerting ourselves extremely by, like, carrying really heavy gear in and out really fast running back and forth and performing in this like really energetic manner where you're jumping up and down and screaming and all of this stuff and then you just go back to sitting on your ass for 20 hours I mean it's extremely bad for you it's like the epitome of anaerobic <laughs> exercise and inactivity so yes it body <laughs> body by tour the vision for this is like picture an infomercial where someone's like Hi, I'm I'm Jack, and this is Body by Jack. And then he sh they show him like you know, bench pressing, and he's got like a weird meal plan and weird things that he's selling you through the infomercial. But Body by Tour is just like Body by Tour, and then it cuts to you, and you're sitting, and you look really depressed, and your skin is starting to break out, and you're just like you know, smushing into the van seat. So anyway, we think it's definitely gonna sell more than our record. So. So we're gonna go into business. Okay, <laughs> one week ago today, um, our, our third album, Searchlights, came out. Tamim can show you our beautiful LP. Um, it, we, we can, it's on CD and LP. The LP also comes with a free digital download card in the back so that you don't have to choose between the beautiful sound of vinyl and having something on your iPod. Um, but no, we're really excited about it and um, we're touring on it and um, selling it at shows and you can buy it online and um, we worked really hard on it and uh, I, I think it's a big um, you know when I was talking I was talking before about um, you know the difference between playing live and recording and I definitely think that one of the things I'm really proud about about this record is that it sort of bridges that gap better than uh, the best that I think we've been able to do so far on our previous two albums um, and so you know 
we I, I really in the past have thought of us as very much a live band like that is where our energy comes through we have a very energetic live performance people talk you know our fans talk about that people talk about that about us a lot and it's been you know sort of the holy grail for us is to make a record that is able to capture that live sound so that people who um, haven't seen us live or you know live can't far away and day. can't see us yeah can't <laughs> see, we're not performing for you every day you know that they that you can have something to listen to that actually captures what I think is one of the defining elements of our band which is that sort of high energy high intensity um, sound and so I, I think that you know we've we've gotten pretty close <laughs> with this and I'm very proud of that but right now we're in California we're headed through the Pacific Northwest and back through the Midwest and then we will be gigging regularly on the East Coast up and down in different cities, Boston, DC, Philly, New York, um, Portland, Maine, throughout the winter months. And then we plan to be at South by Southwest again in Texas in March, after which, who knows, but we are definitely talking another national tour and talking Europe in the near future. So we canceled our seven week Europe tour um, that was scheduled for last winter due to illness. So we definitely have a commitment to rebook it. And Shondas.com or Facebook.com slash the Shondas has all the information about tour dates and the album, all that sort of thing. Yeah, Shondas, as you may be able to see on the album, but it's S-H-O-N-D-E-S dot com.